This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The previous question went through and asked us to prepare the full consolidated statement of profit or loss. This question just moves it a bit more towards what you would expect within the exam by asking for bits of the consolidated statement of profit or loss. So it gets you to think uh, of the, the smaller aspect from the overall bigger picture. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, I think there are one, two, three, four things to go through and consider. So if we scroll down uh, to look at the requirements, uh, four things that you have there. First of all, it wants the group revenue figure uh, for PIP. So PIP must be the parent. And again, the year end there is the 31st of December 20x5. Uh, also wants a cost of sales figure. Uh, as well, so I mean that's going to be a bit challenging because you might have pup adjustments and intra-company sales. Uh, it wants the investment income figure uh, to be included, and it also wants the non-controlling interest figure. Okay, so there's quite a lot to get through there, and, it, and it's got varying degrees of difficulty as well. Okay, uh, so let's go through, uh, have a look at the information. Uh, so what you've got there, we know PIP is the parent, uh, it acquired 80%, so we have control of POSI, so there's a 20% NCI. Uh, it was bought on the 1st of July, 20x5, so July, August, September, October, November, December. So you have there, when you're consolidating the results, is it there of POSI, the subsidiary, you need to put in 6 twelfths, okay? Uh, it goes on to tell us that Posey's PP had a fair value of two million more and it's carrying value. So there's a two million dollar uplift uh, and it had, is it the remaining life, is it of five years? So that two million will be depreciated over five years, but do just be very careful uh, that you prorate it. Don't be there by the six months for, for the current year. Okay. Uh, likewise. Uh, there was a $10 million intracompany sale whereby Posey, who is the sub, sold the goods. Again, standard 25% markup and half of them are in inventory at the end of the year. Okay, uh, And it also says there that Posey, so the subsidiary, paid a dividend of $10 million during the year. Okay, So that $10 million will have come out of Posey's profits, of which PIP will have recorded its share. Okay, excellent. Uh, so let's go through, uh, have a look at it uh, in no particular order. So I will just stick with the top, working down to the bottom. Uh, revenue, what have we got? Uh, well, is that 100% of the parent, which is 250, isn't it? But don't forget, we take 6 twelfths of the subsidiary. Is that there of? 280 and then we deduct the intracompany sales which i think were there as 10 weren't they so that's 100 percent of p that's 100 percent of s and don't forget it was a mid-year acquisition and then you've got there haven't you the intracompany sales okay uh, so 250 plus 140 uh, less 10 so 140 plus 250, that's 390, less 10. Uh, that there is 380 million, isn't it? Okay. Excellent. Here we go. Not too bad, hey? Uh, if we're then going through and looking at your cost of sales figure, uh, always the one that's a little bit more challenging. But the easier bits there, first of all, are we put in 100% of the parent? Is that as 100 uh, plus 6 twelfths of the subsidiary and 6 twelfths of that subsidiary? The subsidiary is 160. And then you've got the intra-company sales to deduct of 10 as well. Okay. Uh, there's a lot that's going to go through and happen within here because what we have 
And if we go back to the information, uh, as well as there being a pop, now that depreciation that we calculate on the fair value is charged to cost of sales, isn't it? So what you've got there, you need to add in a little bit more. So it was the 2 million, wasn't it? Uh, it had a life, if memory serves me right, was it the five years? So you need to take a fifth. Uh, but don't forget there as well. To prorate that there is that by six twelfths. Okay, so if I find my calculator, uh, two divided by five, divided by point five, and that works out on zero point two. Okay, uh, and then what you've got as well is the provision for unrealized profits. Okay, uh, so if I'm going through that, looking at my pop adjustment, uh, then the intercompany sales were ten million, weren't they? Standard 25% markup and half of the goods were in inventory. Okay, uh, so I think does that work out as one? That's one million as the pop. Okay, uh, so what you've got there as well is you need to add on another one million. Go through there and work out the cost of sales figure. Uh, again, tapping that into your calculator, I think you end up, is it with 171.2 million dollars. Okay. There you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is very hard indeed, isn't it? Because we have 100% of the parent. We have 100% of the subsidiary. We have the intra-company sales. We have the depreciation on the fair value. And we have the pop adjustments. Okay, so the depreciation, the pop uh, are all there as like expenses, if you like, to increase cost of sales, reduce profit. But don't forget, we need to remove the intra-company sales. Okay, that's deducted. So do be very careful when you're working that figure through there. Okay, excellent. Uh, other one that you've got is looking at the investment income figure, wasn't it? Uh, so what you have there with regards to your investment income figure is, I think we started off, was it, with the 10? So, yep, we've got that figure of 10 there within the parents column. Uh, but don't forget, within there is P share. So, is that 80%? Is it there of, of S's dividend, isn't it? Okay. So, if S, so Posey, paid a dividend of 10 million, then 80% of that will be recorded in the parents book. Uh, so that should therefore leave, is it 2 million? Okay, there we go. So that's the investment income figure that will be within the, the group accounts. Uh, the last one, again, it's a little bit of a challenge, isn't it? Uh, which is looking at the, the non-controlling interest. Uh, what you could do, if you so wish, it is, is put it in that column, the format. Uh, but then there is a shorter way, which we'll mention at the end. But what you've got is the revenue. Is that there of 140, isn't it? Remember, everything is 6 twelfths, isn't it? So we're going to work out S's profits. So cost of sales is that there as 80. But don't forget there as well that you need your pop adjustment. And you also need your fair value adjustment. The pop adjustment was 1. The fair value adjustment well, it was 0 0.2. So your total cost of sales would have been 81.2. That goes into the consolidation. Uh, again, uh, what you've got there is that uh, the pop goes into S's column. Because again, I think was it S was the seller, wasn't it? So the S went through. 
hand shoulder goes to P. And the fair value adjustment needs to be included as well, doesn't it? Because that fair value adjustment uh, is an adjustment on S's assets. Uh, other figures that you got, I think, was it admin? And distribution. Uh, admin is 30. Distribution means there is 20. And then you should also have as well is it your tax figure okay again apologies just be careful uh, the admin and the distribution should be hard shouldn't they so 15 and is it 10 and then the tax figure half of that is also 10 okay uh, if you total that up Does that give me there? Is it 23.8? Uh, the non-controlling interest share of that is 20%, isn't it? So does that give me there? Is it 4.76 million? Okay. Excellent. Uh, there you have it. Okay. Uh, so it's quite a lot to, to list out everything there in, in S's column. Alternatively, what you could do is we've had to make two adjustments, haven't we? Uh, or three as well, if you consider the six twelfths. So what you could alternatively do as you get quicker and better is to work out the figure you could take, say, six twelfths of the 50, which is 6 twelfths of S's profits for the year, deduct the pup of 1, deduct the fair value of 0 0.2, and that should give you 23.8. And then you can do 20% of that, which gives you the 4.76 million. So, hotel, motel, it's entirely up to you how you so do it. Okay. I think that way that we've just mentioned there's quicker, possibly a bit easier, because as we went through as well, you know, you've got to prorate everything on a line by line basis using that method there. I think even I went through, didn't I, and put in the admin and distribution, I forgot to prorate them. So, you know, here at least you're only prorating it once. Uh, keep practicing the questions. Hopefully as you practice them, you're getting a bit of an idea now as to what are the easier bits, what are the harder bits, and also what you're good at and maybe what you're not so good at. So do keep working them through. And if you do make a mistake, just try and learn from that mistake.